Alrighty, boys and girls, welcome to our first ever flip class video. I want you guys to keep in mind that since it is a video, you do have lots of video powers. For example, you could pause the video if it's going too fast. You can always resume playback later. You can fast forward the video, rewind the video, whatever you need to do. Uh, for many of the videos, I'd recommend taking notes, but this one will be a little different. This one we're just going to do a little pre-lab activity. So today in class, you guys all picked up this lab activity. Oh, that's very good drawing. So you have this. We're just going to do a little pre-lab. Keep it nice and easy for this. You definitely want to make sure that you read the introduction here. The introduction is very important. There's going to be a lot of info there that could potentially get used for your quiz. So make sure that you are prepared with any info that I would pull out of there. So we're going to scroll down here a little bit. And you guys will first see uh, you've got some background telling you about the Tonga Trench, which is a trench in the middle of the ocean. It's a very deep trench on a delightful convergent boundary, which is what makes these trenches to oceanic plates coming together. First, let's go over here and look at the map of the trench. So we'll zoom out just a bit so we can see the whole thing. Here's our map of the Tonga Trench. You can see that they've marked uh, various different depths along the trench so you can actually see it makes the line of the trench right there that's really good and then in addition to that there's also several other layers for example the Tonga Trench actually has Tonga Islands these are islands that come up to the surface there's also the Fiji Islands right here which also come up to the surface in addition to that we also have several sea mounts and table mounts over here uh, here's a couple that have flattened off nice table mounts over here closer to the trench and over here a little bit younger a little bit smaller sea mounts those again uh, have the potential to be active volcanoes usually if they're rounded we consider them to still be active volcanoes unless we know otherwise so if we come back up here to the data you can see that they've actually given you a table now the first thing you want to do is take your pencil put a line down there and that'll make it make a little bit more sense you've got two different columns here here's the first column here's your second column so you have the two columns of data and what that's showing you is the depth as uh, showing you foci for different earthquakes that's a plural focus by the way and so they're showing you both the depth of the earthquake and the distance from the trench axis and the trench axis is going to be the trench so that's the distance from the trench and then again same thing over here you have the depth and the distance from the trench axis which again is just distance from the trench so using this data here you're going to plot that on the graph on the third page so here's the graph and you want to pay special attention to the fact that zero this is sea level up here at the top this is sea level right there you can see it's labeled where the trench axis actually is and again on your x there's zero so here this is the beginning of the trench if that were a straight line which it's not that would be the beginning of the trench so there is your trench so using the data from your table up here that you've conveniently separated you're just going to plot the data points from this table down here on the graph and you'll this one is a little tricky this is showing you that a depth of zero kilometers so that'd be your depth of zero is actually showing you this is not one gigantic number the commas are in the wrong place that is one two three four separate data points so make sure that when you're graphing that zero depth that's four separate data points so then when you come down here actually see at the zero depth those are going to be very very close at the zero depth those will be very close to zero away from the trench axis so just something to be aware of so you're going to graph this and you should see something that looks roughly like a plate boundary and that's sort of the point and then you'll just scroll down here uh, to flip over to the next page you're going to answer these questions pretty much based on the info from the introduction 
and also using your graph skills. Just six questions there. That's nice and easy. Nothing too fancy there. I'd highly recommend ripping off the first page so that you can look at the data and look at the graph at the same time without having to flip back and forth a lot. And then you can also look at the picture of the trench as well as the graph, the cross section that you've made at the same time. Use that to help you answer some of these questions. So there's the first part. All right, part two is a little bit different, but the same general idea, more graphing skills. Again, you definitely need to read the introduction to make sure that you have all the information. Again, I can pull any of these factoids out of here and use them on the quiz. I also highly recommend reading over the objectives and procedures because that'll help clarify anything that you may not get out of the video. So according to the procedures, what we're going to be doing is using this graph, which is actually showing us uh, Japan. Now Japan is kind of a unique situation. Japan uh, has a really diverse geologic history. Um, there's all kinds of subducting plate action going down here, including the total subduction of a plate. And you can see you've got these islands, a lot of earthquakes, and you can actually see right here, this is the Japan Trench. The Japan Trench which later when we talk about continental margins you'll see what we mean that we have this Japan Trench right here. On this one you can see you have the Japan Trench and you also have several different points little dots on the graph with decimal points. Now that is actually showing the heat flow for the region. So we're showing the heat flow, uh, essentially a measurement of how much uh, magmatic activity is occurring. And what's really fun is it's shown in the coveted heat flow units. I have no idea what a heat flow unit is, how it would convert to BTUs or anything else, so don't ask me. Bonus points if anybody finds out what they mean by a heat flow unit. Essentially what you're going to do here is the same thing you did before except you'll notice on this one the trench axis is right up the middle. So you need to pay attention if you're going towards the Sea of Japan or towards the Pacific Ocean. Again over here is the Sea of Japan, over here is the Pacific Ocean and you should be seeing Japan pretty much up the middle which also has some heat flow going on which means you guessed it volcanic activity is a possibility. So while we have all this going on, you're going to uh, be investigating how the heat flow looks and just marking it with your y-axis is going to be the decimal. Trench axis, again, that's the distance from the trench. Now the added fun time here is what you actually have to do is you have to take, let's say, for example, we're going to do uh, 0.8 here. Obviously you'd find 0.8, which would be somewhere in this area, and then you have to actually uh, figure out the distance from this point to the trench. So we have point 8 here, and you're just going to draw a straight line perpendicular with the trench. Don't worry, I won't make you break out the compass and construct the perpendicular line. Just eyeball it. Uh, it'll be fine. And then you're going to use your ruler and measure this distance. So you measure that distance, keep it nice and clean and metric because according to our scale, as you see right here, one millimeter is the equivalent of 20 kilometers. So you can use that information here. Again, we have kilometers down here on our scale to plot the distance. So if, when you have this distance here on your paper, you'd measure that, let's say, just for funsies, that it is 7 millimeters. It's probably not, but we'll go with it. 7 millimeters, 7 times 20 gives you 140 kilometers, and so the 0.8 on the Pacific Ocean side, point 0.8 on the Pacific Ocean side is 140 kilometers, which would be somewhere in here. So there would be your point for that one. I would highly recommend you go through and mark off the points as you go. If you draw a lot of lines, it might get a little confusing, but if you just mark off the points, it'll make your life very easy. So just like before, you're going to graph all of that, put it on the graph, and then as you can see on the next page more conclusion questions that go along with this graph and yes you are going to do the advanced activities these ones are kind of a doozy you may want to consult that handy dandy textbook you took home again if you guys have any questions we'll be here in class this is a flipped class activity so your homework is watching this video you don't have to start on the lab unless you're really feeling gung-ho so your homework is to watch the video and then in class on Friday we're going to work through this packet together. Whatever you don't finish though would be homework for over the weekend.
Thanks for watching. See you guys in class.